Okay, so next we move to the sampling distribution for x bar and s. Okay, x bar is the main vector, and s adalah variance covariance sample variance covariance matrix. Okay, so like before this, you know what is the you know how to find distribution for x. Every x can x one, x two. You need to know how the distribution of x when, uh, when we are dealing with the multivariate normal distribution. But also, also, uh, here you need to know how to find the distribution, sampling distribution for the mean vector and also the, uh, sample variance covariance matrix. Okay, so let's we um. Let's we. Recall back uh, how to find the distribution of the sample mean if uh, if our variable is single univariate cases. Okay, univariate cases when p equal to one. So here will be n one. Okay, here will be n one. So when p is one, so the distribution of mean x bar will be normal distribution with mean mu. And the variance will be sigma square divided by n. This one, this term you have learned before this, uh, from the previous semester, okay. Ni untuk univariate cases. Untuk multivariate cases, it will be x bar, the mean vector will be the norm uh, normal will be normally distributed with a uh, p. Equal to how many p that you have, how many uh, x that you have. Uh, the mean is mu vector, mean vector. Okay, and the variance will be big sigma divided by n. Before this, mu and sigma square divided by n. But now, if uh, we deal with the multivariate cases, it will be. Uh, mu vector and matrix of big sigma divided by n so you need to memorize this you need to hafal this theorem okay okay <clears throat> okay let's see the next one adalah sample distribution for a sample Variance covariance matrix. Okay. Alright. So recall balik uh, for the univariate cases when x square and also x bar uh, is from the normal population. We know that n minus one x square divided by sigma square adalah chi square n minus one. Remember that you have learned uh, before this in uh, inferential subject. This one, this one. Okay, be familiar with this term. Okay, n minus one s square over sigma square adalah chi square with n minus one degree of freedom. And we also know that the formula of s square will be summation of x i minus x bar square over n minus. One, you are familiar with this formula, so because of that, okay, when we uh, manipulate this formula, it will be s square multiply n minus one equal to summation of x i minus x bar square. So this term, this term will be chi square n minus one multiplied by sigma square. Because of that, we can write like this. Okay, univariate cases, and then we also write it as n minus one s square multiply s square summation of z square j. Z adalah uh, standard normal distribution. So so it will be. Okay, so sigma z adalah normal distribution with min zero. And variance sigma square. Ini adalah univariate cases. So we apply this univariate cases dalam bentuk multivariate cases. Then we can say that Zj 
which is matrix of x j minus matrix of x bar adalah normally distributed with mean 0 and variance big sigma okay so n minus 1 s adalah will be wishard distribution with degree of freedom n minus 1 okay so for this term wishard distribution you have to memorize the new distribution that uh, will be introduced in this chapter so uh, there is two there is two distribution that you need to memorize now which is the distribution of min for multivariate and distribution of s which is n minus 1 s adalah wishard distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom okay so this part uh, uh, this topic for this topic you need to uh, more memorize the theorem okay so after this you just uh, make a short note uh, write down the theorem that you need to memorize it's it will help you later okay so this is actually the wishard distribution okay this is the wishard distribution okay Okay, this is the Wishart distribution. Uh, just for now, you just need to know what is uh, what, what, is, what is the Wishart distribution. Okay, uh, no need for you to know every single thing of the uh, Wishart distribution here. Tak perlu hafal lagi lah Wishart distribution ni. Just kena tahu of this one. Okay, so, okay, sampling distribution for S n minus one S adalah wish distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom okay okay so i harap jelas sampai situ ada sikit lagi um, which is um, when we deal with the large sample of x bar dan s okay s adalah uh, samples Variance covariance matrix. Okay, this is on topic 4.5 in page 175. Okay. Let's see. Okay, if X adalah large number, okay, large number of independent, okay, uh, causes v1 v2 until vn so means that x adalah summation of v okay x adalah v1 plus v2 up to vn so we can say that x has a nearly normal distribution and x bar is also nearly normal for large sample size okay because of x adalah large number of independent so summation of x oh, okay sorry when x adalah large number of independent so we can say that x can be approximate kepada normal distribution because of we are using the theorem of central limit theorem so x bar pun we also can say that x bar is also normal, uh, approximately normal distribution for large sample size right we will use the uh, theorem of central limit theorem ok itu yang you dah faham sebelum ni ok so sama juga when we deal with the multivariate cases ok so here Benda sama macam tadi juga. When Y adalah independent observation from a population may be not be normal but Y bar can be normal distribution when N approximately infinity. Maksudnya N adalah large number so Y can be approximate kepada normal distribution uh, walaupun Sorry, Y bar can be approximately normal distribution Walaupun Y1, Y2 may be not a normal distribution Okay Okay, in multivariate cases 
Sama juga we use the concept of central limit theorem. If x1, x2 up to xn adalah independent observation from a population may not be a multivariate normal with mean expected of x or mean vector. x bar converge in probability y to mu and s converge in probability of y to um, a big sigma. So, dia kata kat sini, according to the central limit theorem, when x adalah, uh, when x having the mean mu, uh, mu vector, and the covariance, variance covariance matrix uh, big sigma, so, square root of n multiply x bar minus mu will be approximately normal with mean mu and variance is uh, big sigma which is the variance covariance metric for large sample size ok for large sample size ok so this part this part you need to memorize at dalam your short note ok another one that you need ok kita sambung eh? ok kita sambung so actually um, we will use two method two method uh, uh, to see whether our variable is uh, normal or not which is using the QQ plot uh, sorry using the graphical plot uh, ataupun another one is using the test okay so we are using the qq plot when we are uh, when we are testing or uh, we want to know whether the our variable is um, normal or not for univariate untuk single variable untuk satu variable kita akan gunakan qq plot when we are using the graphical to see whether the variable is um, uh, normal or not okay qq plot Okay, uh, so step, actually step untuk uh, apa ni? Um, step to plot the QQ plot ada dekat page 179 ada dekat page 179 in your textbook at the bottom of the page 179 Okay So, kalau you tengok kat situ um, The first step adalah order the original observation of x okay of x and their corresponding probability values so first of all um, to plot the qq plot you need to first of all you need to order the the observation we have you have your observation our observation adalah x kan let's say we have only one x because of univariate so kita akan gunakan qq plot uh, to see whether this variable uh, is normal or not so first of all we need to order the observation so x2 adalah ordered observation so uh, kalau you tengok kita punya apa ni um, powerpoint ni kan yang you ada apa yang, yang, yang you ada so yang I tunjuk sekarang ni kan example 4.9 tu kan Okay, the first uh, the first column kat situ, kat situ adalah order observation. So, first of all, actually, you, uh, your your observation, it can be random. Maksudnya, bukan dalam bentuk ordered lah. So, first of all, you kena orderkan dulu observation because of that lah. The first row tu adalah negative 1, negative 0 0.1 sehinggalah 2.3. Tidak ordered kan. Okay, so itu adalah X yang kita ada. Kita punya variable X. Kat sini ianya adalah XJ kan. XJ, J tu 1 until N. Okay, so kat sini we have uh, n is 10. So, we have 1 x1 sehingga x10. x1 adalah negatif 1. x10 adalah 2.3. Itu adalah x. Okay, and then uh, we need to find the probability levels by j minus half divided by n. Second column ni kan. Second column ni adalah. Okay, second column tu adalah probability level ok, the formula is j minus half divided by n j tu adalah, tadi kan x j, so for the first row j nya adalah 1 lah 
So 1 minus half divided by n. So 1 minus half is 0 0.5 divided by n is 10. So because of that, we get 0 0.05. Okay, the second row. Macam mana dia dapat 0 0.15? It will be 2 minus half divided by 10. Okay, you try. You akan dapat 0 0.15. Sehinggalah, you buat satu-satu. Sehingga the last row. Uh, how we get 0 0.95 it will be 10 minus half divided by 10 we akan dapat 0 0.95 so now kita dah ada order observation dan juga probability levels we have this probability levels untuk to find the quartile the last column tu the, the third column adalah standard norm, normal quartile quantile okay sorry standard normal quantile okay so q ni Q ni yang kita nak cari uh, uh, because of we want to plot the QQ plot ni actually adalah dekat dia punya uh, dekat dia punya part C X ni adalah X axis adalah quantile dan Y axis adalah observation which is X so we need to find the standard normal quantiles using the uh, standard normal table Okay, using the standard normal table. Okay, let's see how we use the standard normal table. Okay, here. So, yang ni actually, um, I tak bawa balik um, table merah tu. So, table yang I ada ni adalah table less than or equal to kan. Uh, table daripada your textbook sebenarnya. So, kalau you tengok table merah, dia akan berbeza sikit lah. So, I percaya you all dah biasa guna table merah tu kan. Nak, nak dapatkan um, probability using the standard normal table. Okay. So, yang pertama tadi. Okay, let's see. Uh, negative. Okay, macam mana? How to get the value of negative 1.645. Okay, so. Uh, so, uh, the second column tu adalah nilai probability. So, uh, you, kita akan tengok from the... Uh, normal table nilai probability yang kat dalam tu kan yang kat dalam ni adalah nilai probability ok so probability nya yang uh, the first row adalah 0 0.05 so uh, how to find the value of quantile for 0 0.05 so kalau kat sebab 0 0.05 kan uh, kalau um, 0 0.05 kat sini tak ada kan So, it will be because of dia punya ni Z less than or equal to Z. Uh, small Z. So, sebab tu dia dia akan ada more than 0.5 sahaja kat sini. So, uh, daripada table ni kita akan tengok. Kita akan ambil 0.95 lah. Betul tak? So, zero, kat mana 0.95? So, here 1.6 here. Sama ada 1.64 and 1.65 kan? Okay, so antara ni lah. So actually, the nilai yang betulnya adalah, uh, the exact value actually adalah negative 1.645. Nampak tak? Di sini, 0 0.5, 0 0.9. Kat sini kita akan ambil 0 0.9 kan? So 1.645 dekat sini sebenarnya. Okay. Satu lagi, kenapa dia punya value kat situ akan jadi negatif? Kenapa ianya negatif? Okay. So, ingat tak uh, kita punya uh, shape of the normal distribution like this kan yang merah ni yang I buat. Okay, uh, kita punya bell shape. So, nilai probability dan bell shape tu semua adalah satu sebenarnya kan. And then the bell shape ni symmetrical. Sebelah kiri 0.5 dan uh, probability untuk uh, the positive side 0.5 dan negative side 0.5. So, probability... Kalau probability uh, dekat this column, okay, probability dekat the second column ni adalah less than 0.5, so kita akan ambil kuantal yang negatif. Dia akan ada tanda negatif. Kalau kita tengok sini kan, the second row, third row semuanya less than 0.5, 0.25, 0.35 semuanya negatif. Sehinggalah 0.45 pun kuantal kita akan letak negatif. And then the next row tu uh, dia punya probability adalah 0.55 so probab uh, quantile nya will be positive. Okay.
Alright, so saya harap you faham. Okay, so uh, to actually to 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 plot the QQ plot, we need this first row, uh, sorry, first column and the third column. Second column ni kita cari sebab we want to use the standard normal table tadi untuk cari kuantai. Okay, boleh? So, nanti you boleh try tengok using your your standard normal table. Betul tak? Probability 0.15 dia punya kuantai adalah 1.036 Ok let's see Ok let's see 0.15 so kalau kita gunakan table ni It will be 1 minus 0.15 So it will be 0.85 0.85 kat mana So antara ni kan 1.0 1.03 Or 1.04 Sebenarnya kan Ok that, but the exact value actually adalah Negative 1.036 Six. Kenapa negatif? It's because of nilai dia punya probability tadi adalah less than 0.5. So, when we have these two column, the second step, uh, second step tadi kita calculate the quantile and then the uh, third step adalah plot. Plot, observation, xj versus quantile. So, just plot. We have these two column. Just plot the graph. Okay, remember XJ versus QJ. Observation versus quantile. Okay, so uh, still remember how to uh, observe the, the, the QQ plot. We want to see whether our observation sorry our variable tadi adalah normal ke tidak normal or not we can see from the straight line kan so uh, from this graph kat sini eh, example 4.9 ni we can see that okay the pair of xj dan qj ni adalah lie very nearly along a straight line okay dia terbentuk uh, approximately straight line so we can say that the data are normally distributed ataupun, uh, ataupun the variable are normally, the data are normally distributed the, so the variable are normal ok, so this is the way how you um, apa ni, observe the QQ plot Okay, this um, plot, example 4.10 ni, uh, QQ plot juga. Okay, kalau dalam your textbook, data dia ada dekat page uh, 180. 180, so first over dekat situ dia ada data, dia ada variable. Tapi dia tak tunjukkan macam mana nak dapatkan nilai probability and also the uh, quantile uh, punya value. So, you boleh try buat. Tapi kat sini data banyak sikit lah. Dia ada 42 data. Okay. And then, so uh, so last kali, dia, bila dia, kita plotkan the, this QQ plot, you akan dapat this. Uh, kat example 4.10 ni. Uh, apa ni? You akan dapat this uh, QQ plot. So, from here, nak tunjukkan contoh uh, yang this plot, uh, apa ni, not normally distributed. Why? Because of these two, okay, these two plot adalah, uh, dia nampak seolah-olah, bukan straight line kan, dia ada nampak curve sikit. Why? Because of maybe we can say that, okay, observation, these two observation adalah outlier. So, because of that, dia tak normal. Okay, ini adalah contoh, uh, data are not normally distributed. Okay, that is the way how to uh, use the QQ plot to observe about the normality. Okay, the next one adalah we are using the testing. Uh, uh, we are using the, apa ni, dipanggil um, correlation coefficient for the QQ plot. Okay. Okay, tadi graphical. So, sekarang gunakan test. Bila gunakan test, Bila saya kata gunakan test, so mestilah ada hypothesis. Ada H0, ada H1. Okay. So, saya tunjuk sikit. Okay, here. 
Alright, so kita akan ada H0, H1. H0 adalah the variable is normal. H1 the variable is not normal. And then kita akan gunakan value alpha. Alpha is depends pada soalan ataupun depends pada researcher whether nak gunakan 0.05 or 0.1 lah biasanya. 0.05 ataupun 0.1. And then uh, the uh, apa ni? statistic uh, punya formula adalah RQ kat sini RQ so kita, kita tengok macam mana nak uh, apa ni how to calculate the value of RQ and akan ada decision rule okay alright so this is RQ RQ uh, this one is on page 181 RQ ni dipanggil correlation coefficient for QQ plot so this the formula uh, to find the value of RQ we need to calculate this RQ untuk nak buat test tadi so kalau tengok formula ni it is summation of xj minus x bar xj adalah observation tadi minus x bar x bar adalah min of x and then qj quantile minus q bar min for q ok Divide dengan square root of summation of xj minus x bar square multiply square root of summation qj minus q bar square. Pernah nampak tak formula ni? Macam pernah, um, I mean familiar tak dengan formula ni? So actually formula ni seolah-olah formula untuk you dapatkan correlation saja. Cuma sekarang ni our variables kat sini adalah x dan juga q. So kita ada kita gunakan tadi observation dan juga kuantal. So, actually kita boleh ubah dia. Kalau you, you tak nak kira satu-satu kan, you kena buat kolom. You just uh, using the uh, knowledge from um, regression analysis. This is the one kan. It will, it will be SXY kan formula for correlation lah. Like SXY divide square root of SXX multiply square root of SYY. So, kat sini we treat as X sebagai X and Q sebagai Y. Okay. X sebagai X and Q sebagai Y. So, kolom uh, observation tadi adalah X. Kolom quantile tadi sebagai Y. And then you just key in dalam your calculator using the mode regression. Then, uh, and then just apa ni get the information about summation of x, y, summation x, summation y, summation of y square and summation of y square and replace here to get the value of r q. The value of r q ni kena ada jalan kerja. So, uh, kalau you guna calculator, you akan terus, you, you can get the straight answer for r, right? But, uh, in exam, you need to you need to write down all the value of uh, summation eh, to get the full mark. Okay. So that is the RQ. Alright. Okay. So macam I cakap tadi. Sorry eh. Pening dah you. Okay. So here again. So the, uh, the hypothesis testing. We have hash not hash one. Uh, in this example, dia akan gunakan alpha 0.1 alpha 0.1 and then uh, alpha 0.1 and then kira R, RQ RQ nanti you boleh kira, you guna your calculator, you boleh try, last kali you akan dapat RQ adalah 0.994 ok 0.994 and then decision rule will be, we will reject hash not if RQ less than the critical point for QQ plot, which is, macam mana dapatkan critical point tadi tu, kita akan gunakan this table. Dalam exam nanti, table ni akan diberi. Okay, this table. Okay, so macam mana nak gunakan this table? Gunakan value alpha dan juga nilai and sample size. So, in our example tadi, our sample size adalah 10 and our alpha, kita gunakan 0.1. So, the value of critical point adalah 0.9351. So, because of that, here we can say that, uh, tadi kita, we compare 
the value of RQ with the critical point 0 0.9351 okay so because of RQ is more than the critical point so we do not reject hash naught sebabnya kita reject hash naught bila RQ less than the critical point in this case RQ more than zero uh, the critical point so we do not reject hash naught bila we do not reject hash naught so we can say that the variable is normal okay so uh, tally lah dengan kita punya graphical uh, tadi graphical um, a plot tadi kan normal so sama so the, con uh, the, the, the result is equal Okay, that is the way how you use the testing to check whether your variable, your univariate, the single variable is normal or not. Okay. So actually, uh, itu sahaja. Okay, uh, the lecture yang I nak cover for today. So, um... Tadi I tak 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 bagi tahu lagi. Uh, actually saya nak minta maaf juga lah for this apa ni uh, our first class ni uh, bukan tak berapa prepare cuma dia punya uh, apa ni material tu tak siap lagi. Sebenarnya uh, actually uh, so after this I, I akan bagi modul lengkap. Modul lengkap ni uh, insya Allah lah. Uh, apa ni uh, di pihak lecturer kita try buat modul untuk you um, study bila you tengok modul tu seolah-olah macam you boleh faham lah tanpa tanpa penerangan pun insyaAllah nak buat macam tu lah kalau boleh lah so tapi I akan uh, apa ni lecture jugalah buat macam ni juga buat video macam ni cuma modul tu akan ada nanti so sekarang ni untuk chapter 3 ni pensyarah yang buat uh, modul uh, untuk chapter 3 ni tak siap lagi so after this I akan bagi jugalah modul ni untuk you all so for the first time class after uh, during PKP ni uh, macam ni lah dulu minta maaf lah ya uh, so apa-apa you boleh tanya tak ada masalah boleh tanya kat google classroom or boleh tanya dekat whatsapp ok so um, task the next task uh, akan menyusun nanti jangan risau alright thank you semua Assalamualaikum